Okay, so I open up Deep Sky Stacker and I'm using version 3.3.4 as it's the only one that works with my Canon 1300D RAW files. Um, so what we need to do is open the lights or picture files. Um, so it's already gone to the original um, folder where they are and I'm looking for RAW files so I can select all of these down here and click open and that will bring them all in uh, directly now we can go to for the dark files and for the darks I've actually um, as I've already processed this one time just to try it out I have a master dark file so I'm going to use that instead and in fact the same thing goes for the flat files and the offset bias files okay so they're all in there um, so if you need a description of these files um, you can look in the uh, Deep Sky Stacker help it's pretty good okay so now that we've done that you'll notice these files aren't checked um, and it's uh, just a peculiarity I don't know why it does that but uh, on Deep Sky Stacker it automatically checks the bottom files which are these master flat, master dark and master offsets and it does the same with the standard um, if they were, even if they weren't master flats, they, if they were just flats they would be ticked but not the lights so we check all and then we want to do a register checked pictures so because I've already done this I'm going to uncheck that box there um, we need to go on the advanced tab first of all and do this star detection threshold <coughs> now usually it's down at about sort of 15 percent but for this um, as they were two minute exposures um, it seems to be a lot higher um, so we'll let it do the calculation and we're looking for somewhere around 90 or 100 stars okay 109 stars that'll do that's fine um, so if we then have a look at the uh, recommended settings anything that's already in green are already applied um, so if we just scroll down a little bit we use bilinear density bearing we're using a modded DSLR in this case so reset the white balance no narrow band um, and then if I go a bit further down I'm going to use the Sigma clipping and the RGB background calibration so as it says right at the top um, these are the recommended settings they not, may not work in all situations but they're often good starting points so we just click OK and uh, stacking parameters just leave on default I mean you can go in there standard mode and then it, it's picked out some of the um, settings for the recommended ones um, but in general should be fine so we just click OK now and it tells me we're going to ex uh, estimate the total exposure is 2 hours and 42 minutes um, that's with all of the 81 dark frames um, but it's only going to look at the, the best 85% of them so let's click OK and off it goes OK so it's saving the final image and uh, then it'll reload it Uh, it's taken about 10-15 um, minutes to do this so yeah quite intensive okay so what you can see is that it's this is where it saved it to the name of it it's taken 68 of those 81 frames so we have a total of 2 hours and 16 minutes of exposures we can see something forming here the Rosette Nebula um, now you can do some work in Deep Sky Stacker 
um, but yeah, it's it's not 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 the greatest program for uh, post processing. So uh, rather than mess about with it too much in this, I would suggest you just simply go to this and put it into Lightroom or Photoshop and do most of the work from there. So let's do that now. Okay, so I'm using Lightroom 571. Oh, that's my last image, which was the large and small Magellanic Clouds, along with um, Tucanai 47, a beautiful globular cluster. Um, but that's not what we're here to look at anyway. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so... Let's go to the library module and go for uh, import. Okay, we can see we've got some red here. Um, and uh, looking at the histogram, yeah, it's it's nicely centralized. It's not too far over to one side or the other, so we should be able to do something with that. Um, but let's just go into the develop module. That gives us a few more options. Now, normally I wouldn't recommend this tone button. It doesn't seem to work very well. Um, but let's just try it now. And as you can see, almost immediately, um, it boosts up the whites, uh, drops the blacks back adds on to the exposure and the contrast and we get something that's not half bad really it's uh, it's coming on quite nicely really lots of detail in there so um, yeah I think we'll go with the automatic version on that for now um, perhaps we can improve clarity and the vibrance a little bit Too bad. Let's uh, pick a neutral target. So we want something a little bit more grey on that central spot. I think that actually made it worse, but anyway. Just see what we can do with this bit. Okay, gives a bit more contrast. And then uh, if we come down here for the split toning and the color. I think we can probably go in and see what that does. That so you can you can overprocess it very easily, but somewhere in between the two. That's good. Yeah, okay, I'm liking that. There's a little bit of a, a gradient going on down here. <coughs> I'm never quite sure how to get rid of those. Alright, so let's just uh, crop it down a little bit. Let's use the original aspect ratio. Alright, 
and there we go I think that's pretty good and then all I do is export it and I export it to hard drive and I set it up as a JPEG and go through the rest of the, the settings down there great that's about it